الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله من الحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم اللهم رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب شعني صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما نافعا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم صلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم صلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم أستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله My dear respected brothers and elders Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It is a great opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled me and you to sit here. And I ask Allah to inspire me words that becomes the means and the reason and becomes the means of hidayat for me, myself and throughout this locality and throughout the mankind. And that my words, because of one word, can reach beyond imagining that maybe one word of mine may may become the means of hidayat for other people throughout the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have read this Quranic ayat and talking for the past couple of weeks upon dhikrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ayat that I have read, colliding it together, it is a quite a similarity topic subject but it is something in a bit more depth to explain for the past couple of weeks what I have been explaining. Today we in this world Allah has created us perfectly in a perfect position and Allah has gave me and you beyond our imagination brothers and sisters. What Allah has gave me and you, we cannot be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all our life, even if we spend our life in prostration in front of Allah. Let's just take one example. Our eyes, this one eyes, the doctors in this world, in this locality, and all the doctors throughout the whole world, get together, they will not able to make one single eye. Yet, forget all about the nose, the eyes, the hair, the lips, the legs, the fingers, the toe, all this. Forget about making all this. Not even one single eye the old doctors can make, my brothers. 
So we cannot be grateful to Allah just for Allah giving us this ni'mat of eyes. But one of the greatest thing is brothers, that Allah has gave us the ni'mat, the gift of life. And this gift and ni'mat of life, we cannot be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, obviously, obviously this life is a test. This life is a trial, it's an examination. But a person will be only remembered after he leaves from this world. People don't remember how rich you are. Remember this, please. Learn this lesson and go home and teach your wives and sisters and mothers. <coughs> People don't remember how rich you are. People don't remember what clothes you are wearing. People don't remember what beautiful looks you have. But only one thing people always remember, your person personality. Your personality, what kind of personality you had. If you have an upright, complete, beautiful character and personality, this will be talked and this will be remembered even though you have left from this world, it's been maybe 20-30 years. Our personalities, we have been lacking in communities, in localities, in societies, in the masajids. And it has become so much so that our scholars, they say, our elders, they say, that a person just wearing beautiful clothes and looking beautiful, it doesn't make a person be beautiful. Remember this, brothers. A person, if his heart and his mind is not good, is not clean, is not pure, then even though this person may have beautiful clothes, may have all the possessions, all the luxury of this world, or this person may be how handsome he may be, how beautiful and how pretty she may be, but their character, their personality is disgusting. Is disgusting. Is to the lowest of standard. Then brothers, it doesn't matter even if you put your whole body with gold. People will not able to change your personality because your personality, your root is wrong. And why I mention this? Because the core reason is that our hearts, our hearts is corrupted today. One reason, one reason, I will come to that. Just before coming to that, what I'm trying to explain, what I'm trying to explain is, that today, if we fall ill, we go to the doctors. If you have a headache, if you have a backache, if you have a stomachache, we go to the doctors. But the illness of this heart, which the Qur'an was revealed, one of the main purpose of the Qur'an was revealed, for the cure of the heart. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ الشِّفَاءِ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ This Qur'an was revealed for one of the main purpose and ambition that for the cure of the heart. And what is this cure? What is the disease of this heart? The disease of the heart is number one, pride. The disease of the heart is jealousy. The disease of the heart is malice. The disease of the heart is love for dunya, hubbud dunya. The disease of the heart is hubbul ja, love for status, love for position, love to be named, love that fame. The disease of the heart is hubbul ba. Some people they love themselves as well. Can you imagine? This is hubbul ba. Some people they love themselves. What happens? How do they love themselves? They say, they say, if I didn't do this. No one could have done this. He loves himself, man. He loves himself to hell. He says, if I didn't do this, then who else can do this? There's no man living on this earth who can do this. I can do this. Tell me, is this a sign of pride or not? You answer me, please. I like to make a conversation. Is this a sign of pride or not? 
This is definitely sign of pride. And Allah is saying in the Hadith of Qudsi that Ar Kibriya Min Ridai that the pride is my shawl. And whoever has pride, he is pulling the shawl of Allah. And what will happen? He will go to Jahannam. You may have all this salat in your life. You may have all this zakat and charity in your life. You may do good in your life, brothers. You may do good in your life. But if you got pride, one drop of pride, just one drop, you don't need an ocean. You don't need a little pool size. Just one drop of pride in your heart. This will demolish this will distinguish, this will burn all your deeds in your life. It's not a joke, brothers. Iblis, just look at Iblis. He was Azazil. He was the greatest worshipper. No man, no human, no wali has come in this world who has worshipped like Iblis. And there's no knowledgeable person like Iblis. But his one drop of pride has made him doomed for all, for eternal, forever and ever from Jannah, from the Rahmat and from the mercy of Allah. One drop, one drop of pride. What did he say? That man, this is what he said. Man, that's all he had to say. Just to prove pride, all you just need to say, man, Ami, Mehu, Menekia. I did do this. This is sufficient for to be pride. This is sufficient to prove, this is the terminology to explain that this person has pride inside him. So pride is a disease of the heart, brothers. Hasad, backbiting, jealousy, these are all the bad qualities of the heart. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in a very blatant hadith, and I have mentioned this before, again and again, Allah inna fil jasadi mudha, that in this heart there is a portion of meat. Ida saluhat saluhat jasadu kulluhu, if this portion of meat has been rectified, if, the, if this portion of meat has been updated and has done islah on this, on this heart, if you have worked on this heart properly, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ala wahi al qalb, ida saluhat saluhat jasadu kulluhu, ala wahi al qalb. If this heart has been rectified, then the whole body has been rectified. The whole body has been rectified. So, brothers, it is not enough. It is not enough, brothers. Please listen to this. And please listen very carefully. Put this in your mind and your heart. It is not enough if my name is Abdul Rahman, or if I put my name on my on my chest, Shodri, or if I, if I put my name Khan, or if I put my name Sayyid, or if I put my name this long title, yes. But my personality is disgusting, brothers. It doesn't matter how long title you have. If your personality is not good, brothers, then brothers, I am telling you, you, your name will not give you no benefit. And brothers, I am telling you this very, 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 please listen very carefully. The Masajid, and I've mentioned this before, the Masjid has been made for the worship of Allah. And in reality, people when they come to the Masjid, people were supposed to get a peace and serenity and barakah in the masjid. But I am telling you, 90%, not just in this locality, I am talking throughout, throughout the nation. In majority of the masjids, and this is one of the signs of the last hour, the last day of Qiyamah, in majority of the masajid, all the fitnas has come into the masajid. All the fitnas is come in the house of Allah. <coughs> People don't come to the masjid for the reason and for the sole reason to come pray salat. People come for many ambitions, many motives. Some people come to the masjid to look for a job. Some people come to the masjid to promote his job. Some people come to the masjid to look for other people's faults. 
Or some people come to the masjid to look for the talk of the town. What is going on in the locality? Maybe if I come to the masjid, I'll know what's going on. Brothers, our main objective and motive is wrong. Our intention is wrong, come to the masjid. To come to the masjid, I've said this, mentioned this before. The masjid is the house of Allah. Once you enter the bab of Baytul Rahman, masjid is Baytul Rahman, the house of Allah. When you come into the house of Allah, what is Rahman, Baytul Rahman? The house of Allah. The house of Allah is that place, that secluded place, that boundary, where 24 hours there was supposed to be Sakina, Rahmat. But when we come into the masjid, you know some people, they sit in the lines in the masjid. But I, I really get scared sometimes. Because people's motive and intentions is very, very dangerous. You can't imagine what is this person thinking about you. You can't imagine why has this person come to the masjid. Has he really come to pray Salat or he's come for anything else? So brothers, the masjid, the house of Allah, once you come into the masjid, the dunya is supposed to stay out of the door. Your dunya should not come into the masjid. I feel very bad and sad. I've been to other masajids throughout the nation, throughout different, different localities. I've seen in masjids, that inside, as soon as you come into the masjid, it is pin drop silence. There's no meetings in the masjid, there's no talks in the masjid, there's no gatherings like chit chat gathering going on in the masjid, and there's no like uh, powerhouse talk of the town, what's going on in the masjid, and what's going on in the locality. I've seen masjid pin drop silence. I'll give you one, one example, masjid in Nur in Le Leicester. I went to that masjid, subhanallah, pain drop silence, and from beginning to the end, all salat people, they just come to the masjid, pay their salat peacefully, quietly, and then they walk out. There's no chit chat, no talking in the masjid. All talking is outside the door. All dunya should be outside the door masjid. So we have to come to this routine. We have to come to this routine, that if we want to do this, I have to rectify, act, rectify myself. Please, before you point like this, you have to remember, when you point at people, this is the problem about us today. We love pointing at people like this. You, you, you. But you don't remember that three fingers is pointing at yourself. When you're pointing at people, three fingers actually is pointing at yourself. What are you doing for yourself? What are you doing for your akhirah? What are you doing for your qabr? We just love pinpointing at people. We just love pinpointing pointing at the elders. We just love pinpointing pointing at imams. We just love pinpointing at this, that, this, that, this, that. What did you do for your akhirah? What are you doing for yourself? It's very sad, I have to mention this. This is a disease in the society, disease in the masajids. It has to be mentioned. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has mentioned that the main core disease is in the heart. If this heart is not rectified, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, I have control of everything. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have control of everything, but I do not have control of my heart. He made dua, Ya muqallib al qulub O oh Allah, turn my heart. If a person is dragatic, if a person is dragatic, he has drugs, he's addicted, he can't come out of his drugs. If a person is drinking alcohol, this person is a sharabi, this person is addicted, he can't come out of drinking. If a person is gambling, even gambling people can get addicted as well. He can't come out. Even if you shout at him, beat him up. Even if you give him day and night, nasiyat, was, if Allah does not guide him, no one can guide him. For you, for your guidance, you have to ask Allah yourself. Ya muqallib al qulub O oh Allah, turn my heart. O oh Allah, turn my heart. Sarrif quluban ala dini. Turn my heart towards your deed and religion, towards peace and barakah. 
Ya Musabbit al Qulub. O you, O Allah, who keeps the heart firm. Musabbit al Qulub. Sabbit qalbi ala ta'ati. That keep my heart firm on your obedience. Rasulullah has taught us these du'as. He has taught us the du'as. He has gave us the prescription as well as he's gave us the medication as well. Subhanallah. Which teacher, which severe, which teacher will you get that he gives the medication, he gives the prescription as well as he gives the medication as well. So brothers, our hearts and our mind, our thinking, our mind has to be very open, more broad, more broad, more open, more welcoming, more open heart. You know the Sahabas, you know why every nation had cherished the, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum? Because their hearts and their mind was wide open. Don't be narrow-minded in life, brothers. Don't be narrow. Don't be small-minded. We be very small. The, our minds becomes very small. Over little things, we make big issues. Maybe it's, it's maybe this big thing, yeah? And then we start making a big talk, big gathering, big meeting. Na'udhu billahi min It's just a little thing. It's just a little thing. It can be solved within seconds. But why do we have to do these things? Why? So we have to, we have to, we have to learn every second and how to make things better. Things can be solved within seconds without making big, big issues out of it. It can be solved. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, one of the core main reason for a person to be corrupted is his heart. And our scholars they say, and our elders they say. It is not befit. It is not good enough. If you look beautiful and you wear beautiful clothes, but your personality is very, very bad. Downgraded. In personality wise, you are zero. And everything else, you are a hero. But in your personality, your conduct, your apprehend, your approach, your, your thinking, your thinking is corrupted then you are zero because Allah says in the Quran I'm telling you from Nas I'm telling you from Quran that you may do many many good things in life you have to remember this if you don't stand in front of Allah with the clean heart then in the day of Qiyamah it will be difficult for you to go to Jannah it will be difficult for you Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always made dua Allahumma tahir qalbina min al-nifaq That O oh Allah purify my heart from nifaq, from hypocrisy Wa a'malana min al And from those deeds that people That when, when I do a deed, I do it to show people O oh Allah protect me from this Wa a'malana min al Wa lisanina min al kid and from the tongue that every second it lies. I say something in front of people, smiling, hello, how are you? And then behind him, I'm stabbing him. Behind him, I'm stabbing him. This is what Rasulullah mentioned 1400 years ago. وَلِسَانِنَا مِنَ الْكِذِّ وَعْيُونَنَا مِنَ الْخِيَانَ And from that eye, from that eye that is misled, from that eye that does khiyana of Allah, you know, Allah even knows the khiyana of the eyes. For example, I am looking at him and my eyes is looking with some sort of intention. Allah even knows this, that what intention you are looking at him for. Allah even knows with what intention you are looking at that person. So nothing is concealed from Allah. Nothing is hidden from Allah. This world, we may live anyhow in this world. Remember this. We may remem remember this and please listen to this last thing what I'm going to say. That this world, everything that you see above the ground, this is all for this world, the material of this world. And Allah is reminding us every single day when we are walking on this earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the real house of yours is under your foot. So when you walk on this ground, when you walk on this soil, look at the ground, look again. Ponder again, think again, 
that my reality, I'm going to go under my foot. I'm going to really, I'm going to be going under this soil. This is my reality. This is the reality for all human beings. Jazakallah khairan. Subhanakallahumma. Wa bihamdika nashabu Allah ilaha illa anta nastafunka wa nafibuli.